Senator, great to have you with us. Just talk about the bipartisan amendment that you're trying to achieve here and what limitations will result as a, if it passes. Well, it's great to be with you. And Congress made it very clear uh, that uh, we were opposed on a bipartisan basis to letting ZTE off the hook. Uh, Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross did the right thing back in April when he imposed very harsh penalties, including restrictions on exports of critical items to ZTE. Then, of course, the president tweeted out that he wanted to help ZTE and Chinese workers, uh, and I think that took everybody by surprise. So what the amendment would do, two things. One, it would prohibit any U.S. federal agency from buying ZTE products, but it would also reinstate the penalties on ZTE, the full penalties, until the president made certain certifications going forward. Uh, can you clarify what are those certain certifications and could that mean that even if your amendment were to pass that ZTE could ultimately live? Well, the certifications would require the, the president to tell Congress that they hadn't violated U.S. law for uh, more than a year. We don't think that's asking uh, too much, so that would obviously limit their ability to, to jump into this uh, deal that they just uh, reached with ZTE. Uh, and second, to certify that ZTE has been cooperating. But I think the one condition requiring that a country, at least for a year, have not violated U.S. law. I think you know the story with ZTE. I mean, not only were they caught and penalized at first, but then they were caught again working behind the scenes in a very um, obvious way to try to undermine the U.S. sanctions policy. And if we let countries off of our, if we catch countries for violating our sanctions and then say, okay, uh, we're going to let you off the hook, it undermines all our sanctions efforts, whether they're against North Korea, Iran, or any other country. Senator Van Hollen, the current deal that the administration has established that will allow uh, ZTE to live stipulates that uh, regulators or enforcement personnel from the U.S. be embedded within ZTE to guarantee that they're uh, not going to do bad stuff in the future. Uh, is that not enough, or why do you think that wouldn't be enough to guarantee that they uh, stay along the straight and narrow? Well, because it's one of these here we go again situations. Uh, ZTE has made those promises and pledges in the past, uh, and then, you know, they had an internal chart showing all the ways that they were going to evade. Uh, U.S. sanctions. Uh, in fact, one of the folks that the, the Chinese decided to put on the ZTE board as part of their so-called cleanup operation uh, was someone who came from a previous entity uh, that has found to have violated U.S. Uh, law. So it doesn't seem like they're serious. And the reality is that uh, the Secretary of Commerce knew he was doing the right thing in April, and he was as surprised as anybody uh, when Donald Trump, President Trump, uh, decided to reverse that uh, that penalty. Senator, one year is a really long time for, for ZTE not to have access to U.S. markets. We saw it under a great degree of pressure. Is their company going out of business part of the cost here? They shouldn't have violated laws in the United States. Are you willing to see the company collapse? I am willing to see it being squeezed much harder uh, than it will be under the agreement that was uh, just reached because they not only got caught, they then went out of their way to try to circumvent U.S. sanctions. I mean, they essentially thumbed their noses at the United States government. And I don't think we should reward that behavior. And I think uh, the deal that was struck does reward that behavior because ZTE was very much on the ropes. We could have demanded even more. Uh, and I don't think it's asking too much uh, to require a foreign entity to have complied with U.S. law for at least a year before they get let off the hook uh, from the sanctions that we've imposed. Again, if, if we're going to go around cutting deals, it will undermine our credibility our, on our entire sanctions policy and, and hurt our national security. What if cutting a deal is part of a bigger plan here with the Chinese to tackle some of the issues on trade, to secure uh, technology from the United States in the future that's obviously been part of the criticism here? Would you, in that case, be willing to cut a deal with ZTE, ZTE for the greater good? 
Well, you're right. There's a lot larger issue here with respect to uh, China, China essentially stealing our technology, uh, forcing U.S. companies that do business in China to share uh, U.S. technology. But that's not part of this deal. In fact, uh, Secretary Ross said that you know what you see is what you get uh, when they announce this deal. There's no sign at all uh, that there are greater concessions. Look, if this was related to a larger agreement on national security. Um, that would be one thing, but it appears that ZTE and the penalties were thought of by Trump, not by Secretary uh, Ross, but by President Trump um, as simply some kind of bargaining chip on other issues, maybe tariffs on soybeans. Who knows what it uh, might have been? And I think in the view of many of us, and again on a bipartisan basis, you go down a very slippery slope uh, when you start trading off national security uh, priorities. Uh, for these other kind of negotiations on unrelated issues. Now, technology protection is related to our national security, but I see no evidence that that was part of this agreement. Has the president compromised national security with this decision, Senator? Yes or no? Oh, I, I think he, he has, because when you're serious about a sanctions policy, you need to implement it. Uh, you can't say one day you're going to impose this penalty because they violated our sanctions, got caught, and then tried to sneak around and violate them again, and then say, okay, we're going to have these harsh penalties, and a week later say, hey, you know what, uh, we're, going to, we're going to back off. Uh, we're going to back off those sanctions. It sends an awful signal uh, to the rest of the world, undermines our credibility, and undermining our credibility on sanctions definitely hurts our national security.